never went to preschool, dropped out of high school, not because I wanted to. Never went to preschool, dropped out of high school, not because I wanted to. Yeah. I can't believe this, suddenly I'm not with no creation All I ever did is pass the way this pop my transgressions Silver and gold The Bible reads and it says And this is the confidence that we have That if we ask according to his will, he hears us And if we know that he hears us Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him Amen Amen there's a confidence that we have, and there's a confidence that we have is that when we ask Him according to His will, He, he hears us. When you ask God according to His will, you are guaranteed that He hears you. But then, how are you going to get to that place where you are able to ask according to His will? The only way you'll ever ask God according to His will is when you, when, when you have made a commitment to hearing His voice. Amen. Hearing His voice. And you hear his voice when you commit yourself to the, to the reading of his word. If you notice this whole week, I've been talking in the daily messages, I've been talking about, um, I've been talking about growing spiritually. Amen. I've been talking about you growing spiritually. It's not one of those interesting messages. People want to hear interesting messages. This is not really like one of those interesting messages. But, but they are necessary messages. Amen. It's a very necessary message. It's a, ne Amen. it's a message to do with your growth Amen. spiritually. Amen. And one of the things that are key significant when it comes to you growing spiritually is being able to read the Bible, the Word of God. Amen. The Word of God is literally food for your soul. Amen. It is food for your soul. And in order for, in order for something to grow, it has got to be fed. Amen. Amen. Like when a little baby is born, if you don't feed that little baby of yours, that little baby is not going to grow. Lack of food is going to cause the baby not to grow. And when the baby fails to grow, guess what's going to happen? You're not going to be happy, isn't it? Nobody celebrates when babies don't grow. Rather, people will be worried to say, how come this baby is not growing? And the very same thing goes for, for, our, spirit, for our spiritual lives. Amen. If there is no growth spiritually, you will be you will be hurt you know you like especially the person who wins that particular person to jesus they will be like you know like i mean what's going on this baby is not growing lack of growth causes misery especially to the one who's meant to be the parent for that particular one amen so growth is part of life and also if something is not growing guess what's happening it's dying if a thing is not growing, it is dying. dying. If a thing is not growing, it is dying. dying. So now you need to tell yourself that I need to grow spiritually. It says that you'll be able to hear the voice of God. It says that when you then pray, you are able to pray the will of God. You need to know what is on the mind of God concerning you. Because God has something on his mind concerning you. God has a plan and a purpose concerning your life. Remember what we say? We say, we say that uh, His plans are not for evil, but for good. To give us uh, a good expected end. That's what we talk about, isn't it? Like the plans of God for our lives are not for evil. And you need to know that particular plan that He has concerning your life. It says that when you then pray, you pray that particular plan into act in your life. Like one of the biggest problems that we have is that people seem to only pray when something is wrong in their lives. Mm -hmm. Amen. When everything is lack and nobody prays. Mm -hmm. Amen. When everything is okay, nobody prays. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they're just waiting for things to be hard. And it looks as though some of the strange things that happen is you, you find out that in some, in some families, there's, there's a funeral just about every year. Mm -hmm. And it is only on funerals that is the only time they go to church. And, and weddings but now when you when you look at it very carefully maybe if those guys had been going to church just about every other day there probably was no need for there to be a funeral every year you know they could have avoided funerals every year if only they were staying in the presence of God just about every other day Amen. like you don't have to be in the presence of God only because there is drama in your life only because there is an issue and something that is happening in your life 
You should be in the presence of God just about every other time. Amen. You should be in the presence of God just about every other time, every other day. Amen. So, you need to pray the will of God all the time. But how do you pray the will of God? You only pray the will of God when you're, when you're a person who hears the voice of God. How do you hear the voice of God? You only hear the voice of God when you spend your time reading and meditating. Meditating on the Word of God. Like one of the most difficult things for people these days is to read, isn't it? Like the world that we're living in is a very fast world. You know, and reading has become really one of the hardest things to do. But reading, especially the Bible, the Word of God, is important because you are feeding your spirit. You are feeding your soul. You've got to feed your soul. See, one thing you need to understand is that uh, the real you is the spirit. Somebody say, the real me is the spirit. You have a soul and you live in the body. You have a soul and you live in the and the body. And what has to happen is that the soul is the one that animates the body. The soul is the one, is the, is the place of desires, the place of will, you know, the place of passions. Like for instance, you know, we speak about praying the will of God. All that happens in the, the soul is the one that has got to know the will of God and then begin to desire that which God desires. But if your soul is not aware of the will of God, therefore your soul is not going to desire, is not going to desire anything to do with with God. Amen. Amen. Your soul has got to desire the will of God. But how is it going to desire the will of God? It has got to be subjected spiritually to the will of God. Your soul has got to be subjected to the will of God. Your soul has got to be subjected. And the only way your soul will be subjected to the will of God is when you're a person who takes time to read Amen. the word of God. I'll continue to say that. Till, till, till somebody begins to read the Word of God. Amen. 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 Till somebody becomes hungry for the Word of God. Like you wake up, every, or, or even before you go to sleep, 12 o'clock midnight, oh, okay, I don't know what time you guys sleep. But, but before you go to sleep, you know, you just say, I am reading the Bible. I am taking the Bible to read. Amen. And as you read it, you don't read it like you're reading a novel. Because there are people that know the Bible from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelations. But you find the person is... The, the person is on drugs. You just don't understand. Like, what happens? How do you know the Bible like that and be on drugs? <laughs> you know, how do you know the Bible like that and be hooked on, on some, some, some kind of an alcohol or substance abuse? It's simply because what the person has is they have the words of the Bible, but they don't have the spirit of the Bible. You see, it's not enough to only have the words that are in the Bible. It's not enough to only know the stories that are in the Bible. Now what is to happen is that the person has got to be, um, like the Word of God has got to be in your heart. Amen. The Word of God has got to be engrafted in your heart. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence because out of it are the issues of life. So now you've got to have your word. You've got to have the word of God right in your heart. And when it's right on the inside of you, what then happens is that when you speak from the... Remember what Jesus Christ says? Jesus Christ tells us that from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you, if you're ever going to pray the word of God, if you're ever going to do the will of God on planet Earth, is you've got to have the word of God right on the inside of you. In other words, you have to be driven by the word of God. Like you're driven by God's word. Like the thing that drives you is the word of God. Like your passions, your desires and everything are just emanating from that single place. They're just emanating from that one place. And that is the word of God. That is the word of God. You've got to be hungry. Hungry, hungry for the word of God. Become hungry and thirsty for the word of God. So the Bible tells us that blessed are they that are hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they shall be filled. Amen. And that's, that is simply just being hungry for the Word of God. It's being hungry for Jesus. Amen. Become hungry for Christ. Become hungry. Let, let there be a hunger generated on the inside of you. Because the only way you're ever going to pray the will of God is when, they, when you're in that place. You're a place where you are hungry spiritually. And you're constantly seeking out the Word of God. And your life is now animated by God Himself. Imagine a life that is animated by God. A life that is driven by God. 
a life that is pushed by God, where it's no longer about me, myself, and I. It's no longer about the unholy trinity. It's not about what I want, what I think, and how I feel. It's not about, you know, it's not about your intellect, your emotions. You know, it's not about you. It's all about God. Imagine coming to that place where it's not about you, but it's all about God. Amen. It's all about God. So one thing that I've come to note and realize is that when you function and operate from that place, you will never be depressed. Amen. You will never be depressed. Amen. So when you lead a life in which, God, in which God is at the very center of your existence, where God is your focus and nothing else. Because remember what the Bible tells us? You know, there's, there's, there's that song, actually it's a song, it's a scripture, it's a gospel song that tells us that um, that all other, all other ground is sinking sand. Yes. Let me tell you, anything else that you might stand on is actually sinking sand. Yes. You have to stand upon the rock, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. And how do you stand on the rock, which is Jesus Christ? Is by spending your time and hearing what are the words of Christ concerning my life? What are his words concerning me? Spending your time, spending time in his word, that is how you stand on him. Amen. Like for instance, you know what Jesus Christ says and you do the very same thing that Jesus Christ says. <laughs> Amen. Standing upon the rock, which is Jesus. Somebody needs to stand upon the rock and stand upon the rock, which is Jesus. And how do you do that? You, you, you do so by spending time in the word of God. When you do that, it will be a lot easier for you to speak the will of God over your life. Amen. Amen. It will be easier for you to speak the will of God over your life if you spend time in His Word. One of the most beautiful and most important things is spending time in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Somebody needs to become hungry. Hungry for the will of God. Amen. Hungry for the will of God. So... When you look at the word confidence from the scripture that we read in First John, in First John chapter five, verse fifteen, um, you know, look at and you try to, to define it, you realize that it speaks about being fearless, uh, being confident, having cheerful courage, and we have this in Christ, isn't it? That's what we're supposed to have. We're supposed to have. We're supposed to have this cheerful courage, this boldness, and this assurance in what Christ has already done. Amen. Amen. We need to have that. We need to have that. And so when we t so when we take a look when we take a look at the word translated will, remember what, what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to pray according to the will of yeah. God. So when we, t when we take a look at the word will in the Greek language, you realize that it's the Greek word thalema. Thalema you pronounce you spell it as T H E L E M A. And what it does is that it speaks of it speaks of one. Uh, okay, it speaks of one who has, who is determined to get something done. And it Amen. speaks of the purpose of God to bless mankind through Christ Jesus. See, Thelema speaks of the, the, pep, the divine purpose of God to bless mankind. And guess, guess how he intends to bless us? He intends to bless us through Christ Jesus. Anything else that you have apart from Christ is not a blessing. Amen. Anything else that you have apart from Jesus is not a blessing. No wonder why you realize that it brings you misery and so much pain. Amen. See, the Bible tells us that the blessing of God is without repentance. When God blesses you, He is not going to take the blessing away from you. Amen. And at the same time, when God blesses you, the Bible tells us that the blessing of the Lord is without sorrow. Which simply means that there is another blessing that actually brings sorrow. There is a blessing that brings pain. You know, as a like... Because what happens is that we limit blessings to material possessions, isn't it? Like a lot of people think, oh, if this guy has a car, then the guy is blessed. If the guy has a house, then the guy is blessed. But no, blessings are not necessarily material possessions. For me personally, I strongly believe that a real blessing is the ability to use whatever resources you have to enforce the plans and the purposes on planet Earth. Amen. Amen. A blessing is to be able to use your resources to worship God. Amen. A person who has something and they're able to use that thing to worship God, then that thing becomes a blessing. blessing. So in other words, a person can have 
can have 10 houses, yes. but if those houses, and neither in those houses there's a Bible study meeting, then those houses are not a blessing at all. Amen. Because there's a very high possibility that at night, 12 midnight, you'll be calling the pastor and saying, there are things moving in my ceiling. Yes. <laughs> you know, these houses that were meant to be blessings, they're not blessings anymore. So because these homes are not being used as objects of worship of God. So things are only a blessing when they are used for the glory of God. Amen. Apart from that, it's not a blessing. So you might have a lot of money, but if you don't use that money to worship God, that money is not a blessing at all. If all that money does is that it buys bombs, guess what bombs are going to do? They're going to make you have a fight. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> They're going to have you have a fight. They're going to break families. Alcohol literally breaks families. Like, you, you wonder why the husband and the wife not to understand one, one another is because the husband is drunk and the wife is sober and they're trying to have a conversation but the husband feels as though uh, the husband feels as though the wife is undermining his authority in the house. <laughs> Why? Simply because he is not thinking straight at that particular time. As far as he's concerned, the wife is just undermining me. You can't be, you know, but the wife is not necessarily undermining you. It's just that you are too intoxicated to understand what the wife is saying. You know, you just too, in other words, had you been sober, this fight would not have happened. This uh, drama would not have occurred had you been sober. So, that's now when your money becomes a curse, which was meant to be a blessing. But the very same money can be used to advance the kingdom of God. And when it's like that, you'll be so happy like, oh, honey, guess what we did? We bought, we, 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 we bought a grace for that family that probably never had anything to eat for the past five days, but now they had something to eat. Why? Because we used our money wisely. Amen. We used our money to bless a family that was without food. You know, the, like, yeah, I could, I could have bought a bomb and got blown, but guess what? We could have had a fight afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> but now we are so happy and excited that, oh, glory to God. Guess what we did? We were able to feed at least a family for the past 30, for the next 30 days. Amen. 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 That money for the bomb went to feed a family. Amen. And that's what I'm just saying. The money for the bomb should go to, to feed a family. There are too many struggling families out there for you to have a bomb. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Too many struggling families out there. Amen. I know you say they're not my, they, they're not on my business. They are your business. <laughs> they are your business. They're your business. You are the one who's supposed to show them the love of God. Yes. You're the one that is supposed to show them the love of God. And when you do stuff like that, it will be also easy for you to know the will of God for your life. Amen. Amen. Like when you do nice things like that to help people out. It becomes easy for you to know the will of God for your life. In other words, uh, when you read scripture, the Bible says, Paul rather says in Romans 1 from verse 16, he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that will love God. That's a righteous person for you. So now what is to happen is that you need to desire. You need to desire this. You need to desire um, being able to think exactly what is on the mind of God, being able to feel what is on the mind of God, and finding yourself doing that which is on the mind of God. That is a righteous person for you. A person who thinks, feels, and acts like God. Amen. So, so, when that, so in that particular scripture, it tells us that the righteousness of God is revealed. It's simply telling us that the will of God is revealed when you do things to do with, with ministry. Amen. Not being ashamed of God, the gospel of Christ. Like, for instance, you know, God tells us that we should give to the poor, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, we should help widows and orphans, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. So when you go out of your way helping out a family that you know that this family is orphaned, that you know that this family is widowed, where, where you know that this family is unable to assist or sustain itself, especially during this particular pandemic, when you go out of your way, guess what? You are simply not being ashamed of the gospel. So being ashamed of the gospel is not necessarily just the subject of you talking with your mouth about Christ, but you demonstrating the likeliness and the likelihood or the characteristics of Jesus. Like you have to demonstrate the characteristics of Christ. Amen. And how do you do that? You do that by doing something good 
for someone else. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, guess what? The Bible tells us that the will of God is revealed in your life. So when you then stand and you begin to pray, you then pray from a place of understanding, from a place of revelation, because that's what God promises us. He promises us the revelation of his will when we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. When we're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And what also happens is that you have arrived at a place in your life where you are very selfless, where it's not about me, myself, and I but it's all about God. So whatever you ask for from God is not necessarily about you. It's not necessarily for you, but it's for the advancement of the kingdom of God. It's for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Like for instance, some people desire to make a lot of money in life, isn't it? But the question is, what do you want to do with all that money? If you want to make a lot of money for the advancement of the kingdom of God, that's the will of God, isn't it? So God will bless the works of your hands and God will answer your prayer because you've been praying according to his will like to say God I want to make a lot of money says that I'll be able to finance the kingdom I want to be able I want to be able to finance the work of God but I can't do that when I'm broke I need money to make that happen so when you pray and your desire is to advance the kingdom of God you are literally praying according to the will of God and you are guaranteed that prayer will be answered amen you're guaranteed that prayer will be answered because there's some times where you will make a lot of money and all that money will do is it will kill you. Mm -hmm. Because you're not necessarily using it for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. You know, we hear of people like, you know, when the diamonds thing began in Chiazgo there. And, you know, people will be just sitting, sitting by the border stores, the growth points rather, that's what they're called. And they're just, they just, they just getting dwanged and they, they're just drinking and they're getting wasted. And they get an opportunity to go to Chiazgo. <laughs> and get a diamond, you know, like during that time it was probably easy, you know, when it all started. And someone gets an opportunity to go and get a diamond from Chiazgo and sells the diamond and his life changes overnight, doesn't it? Like now he, now he buys big cars and you know, he now has a, you know, he has a big house and stuff. And then afterwards, guess what happens? He probably gets two, three more wives and, and so many crazy things are happening. And before you realize it, in a space of three or four years, you hear the person was involved in a fatal car accident and the person died. Why? Well, simply because the person got money, but unfortunately, it was not, it was not being used for the right purposes. So the if you get money and you don't use it for the purposes of God, the very same money will kill you, which was meant to be a blessing imagine if this guy had just remained by the border stores just drinking himself he probably wasn't going to die as quickly as he did you know but simply because he got resources he got stuff but he had nothing to use it for but just add more women and buy more alcohol and that's what nearly that's what then took their lives i mean there's so many stories of people who had died like that because of the diamond issue mm -hmm. the diamonds have killed a lot of people in them you know, we know some people that got shot, obviously, by the, by the soldiers <laughs> attempting to, to, you know, to get the diamonds. But you realize that these are just people that are driven with a hunger to acquire things, but for what purposes? In other words, I'm just saying, don't be driven with the desire to acquire things for selfish use. Be driven by the desire to acquire things for the advancement of the kingdom of God. And now what happens is that if you are driven by the desire for acquiring things for the advancement of the kingdom of God, you'll be spared from misery. Trust me, if, it, if you don't get it as soon as you, you would like to get it, you will not be miserable. Amen. But if you're a person who is trying to get something for personal gain, you will be miserable if you don't get it in the time that you want to get it. Because it's for your personal use, it's for your personal gain. But if it, is, if it is for the kingdom of God, you will be at peace. Because you know that God will make things right in his time. Amen. You know that everything, all things work together for good. You know that all things are working together for my good. You know there's that song, all things are working together for my good. You say, I'm not a singer, I, I wish I was, I wish I had that grace. <laughs> But you, you, you'll, have, you'll have that confidence in, that understanding that all things are working together for your good. Amen. All things are working together for your good. It, it might take time 
but you will be at peace during that particular time. You will have so much peace and so much confidence that all things are working together for your good. Like it may not be happening as quick as I want it to, but I'm trusting God on this one. I am holding on to Jesus. I'm holding on to Christ. I'm standing upon the promise. God will make it happen in his perfect time. He tells yourself that God's time is the best time. I know you want a miracle. You want it to happen instantly. But sometimes it's a test. It is a test of how faithful are you. Are you going to hold on to the promise? Are you going to hold on to the promise if it takes too long to happen? Or you're simply going to give up and throw in the towel simply because it didn't happen during the time that you were expecting it to, to happen. So, in other words, the only way you get to realize that maybe what you're praying for and asking God for is not necessarily the will of God is when you find yourself getting agitated. When you find yourself getting agitated and getting miserable that this thing is not happening, I've been praying for it for a very long time and it doesn't look like there's anything happening. You see, if you don't have the confidence, remember, remember what we say, the, that scripture says, it says that it is our confidence. When you don't have that confidence, like this is our confidence that, uh, this is our confidence that we have in him that which we ask for. If you don't have that confidence, because when you find yourself getting miserable, getting agitated, it's similar because you are lacking that confidence. If you have confidence, you will trust God and you trust His faithfulness. You tell yourself that God is faithful. God is not a man that He should lie. Neither is He a son of man that He should change His mind. You tell yourself that God will never change His mind concerning this particular subject. You're convinced that it is His will for it to happen. So guess what you do is you hold on to the promise. You hold on to the promise. Hold on to the promise. Like for instance, when you read the story of the children of Israel, you realize that when God took the children of Israel out of Egypt, it was His will yes. to take them into the promised land. Amen. It was the will of God for them to, to go into the promised land. Yeah. But you then realize that as they were in the wilderness, guess what the children, children of Israel began to do? They began to murmur and complain against God. In other words, they were not looking at the promise. They were not looking at the will of God. Imagine if they had only focused on the purpose and focused on the will of God. They would have made it. All of them would have made it into the promised land. All of them would have made it in the promised land. But they then stayed for 40 years on a journey that could have taken only 11 days. Simply because they were not, they were not standing firm on the promise and the will of God for their lives. Hold on to the will. Hold on to the plan. Stand on that which God has said. If God said it, then that should settle it. In other words, you should be at peace and you should celebrate and rejoice all the way. If there was only, the only thing that the children of Israel should have done is they should have been dancing all the way into the promised land. Amen. They should have been rejoicing all the way into the promised land. Like despite the obstacles, despite the things that will come in their way, in other words, they would have just given praise to God. So the Bible tells us, and it tells us that give God praise in all things. Amen. Worship God and give Him praise in all things. Whether things are good or things are bad, you just give Him praise. Because you know that He is faithful. You know that He is faithful. And in as much as you may not see anything in the natural right now, but you got to have that confidence that He is doing something in the background. There is something that is happening in the background. I may not be able to see it. I may not be able to put my hands around it. But I know that God is doing something in the background. We need to have that confidence that God is doing something in the background. And trust in God's faithfulness. Tell ourselves that God is faithful and we trust His faithfulness. Yes. And we hold on to His promise. Amen. Amen. And we hold on to His promise. He's a faithful God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So we hold on to His faithfulness. We, tr we trust God. Praise God, amen. amen. So we, we have this uh, particular portion of scripture, very common scripture. A lot of scripture, know, a lot of people know this particular scripture. And that's Matthew, Matthew 6, 33. I'm, I'm also going to 
I'm also going to look at the same word I've looked at it before. It's the word righteousness that is in that particular scripture. That says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. If there's anything that you should be hungry about, you should be hungry about the kingdom of God and be hungry about... Um, be hungry about His righteousness. Remember what I said earlier about the righteousness of God for the benefit of those who are not here. Is that the righteousness of God, what it actually speaks about, it speaks about a person whose way of thinking, feeling, and acting is entirely conformed to the will of God. See, our message here today, we, we're talking about praying according to the will of God. And how do you pray according to the will of God? You pray according to the will of God when, when you're a person that is given entirely to God. Amen. You need to come to that place where you are given to God and you're given to Him entirely. Not, not halfway, not partly, but entirely give to God. So the, one of the things that you have to do is you, you have to be hungry to an extent that you literally seek the kingdom of God. Amen. Be hungry enough to seek the, uh, the kingdom of God and the righteousness of God. So in order for you to lead a powerful, powerful, successful prayer life is, is when you're able to pray according to the will of God. Mm -hmm. See, one thing about God is that God watches over His word so as to perform it. So when you take time to pray His word, you are guaranteed results. Amen. If you pray His word, you are guaranteed results. Results are a product of praying according to the will of God. Know exactly what is on the mind of God and pray that very same thing. And you're guaranteed results. Amen. You never go wrong when you pray according to the will of God. You never go wrong. And you never, de you never be depressed. You never be miserable. You know, you'll not be in that place of pain when you stand on the promises and the plans of God for your life. Rather, you will have confidence. And the confidence you will have is that all things are working together for my good. You see, when people come to you and, and, and they know exactly what is happening in your life and they're expecting you to be miserable, they're expecting you to be in pain, they're expecting you to be broken, they're expecting you to be hurt, but they just look at you and they, they see that, you no, know, there's a smile on your face. You know, they look at you and they see so much life on the inside of you. You should be miserable. You should be in pain. You should be hurting, but, but you're not. Amen. Because you're holding on to the promise. Amen. You're holding on to the promise. Amen. Amen. You're holding on to the promise. You're, you're, you're looking at that which God has said and you are standing on exactly that which God said. Amen. You're standing on that which God said. In other words, what you're simply doing is you're choosing not to walk by sight. Amen. Amen. You are choosing not to walk according to that which you are seeing. Because that which you are seeing brings you nothing but misery. When you look at the natural, everything is broken. Everything is, everything is in a mess. Nothing is working in your favor if you look in the natural. Yeah. But then if you look in the spirit, you realize, no. All things are working together for my good. Amen. All things are working together in my favor. Amen. Amen. You, believe, you, you, you get to realize like, no, I am not forgotten. I am not forsaken. God is right there with me. Amen. God is right there with me. So one of the biggest problems that we have in this life is, is the problem of comparing our lives with other people's lives. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah, true. You see, all we do is we, we don't get to see, we don't get to see and appreciate and give thanks to God for that which he is doing in our lives because we're looking at other people and we think they are doing much better than we are. Amen. Which is a lie from the pit of hell. Nobody is doing any better than Nobody's doing any better than you. Trust me, they got their own issues. Yes. They, they're just not washing their laundry in the public. They got serious stuff going on in their own personal lives. Mm -hmm. That if if you were to hear their story, I don't know what you would do. Maybe you would hide under a table because you just won't be able to handle their issue. Yeah. Amen. You won't be able to handle their story. You won't be able to handle their story. You see, the story you have is the one that you can handle. 
God has given you a story that you can handle. God has given you an issue that you can handle. If the story is with you, then you can deal with it. Amen. You have the capacity and the ability to handle it. That's why God allowed it in your life. God, that's why he allowed it for you. Amen. Because it is only you who has the capacity and the ability to handle it. So now, you get to that place where you do that which God wills for you. And that is just to give him praise and give him thanks. Amen. Amen. There are some things that will only change in your life when you, do not, when you do a very simple thing, which is praising and worshiping God. Amen. You want to know what is the will of God? The will of God is for you to worship Him. The will of God is for you to praise Him. Amen. That's the will of God for your life. That's the will of God for your life. And when you're in that particular place, imagine you're not going to be depressed when you're worshiping God. You're not going to be depressed when you're praising God. Amen. Never, not in a million years. You will not be miserable worshiping God. That's impossible. That's impossible. When you're worshiping God, see, because now this is what happens when, when you worship Him. He promises that you will open your eyes of understanding. Yes. And you'll begin to see things differently. Amen. When you worship God, you will begin to see things differently. Mm -hmm. So the reason why you're probably miserable is something because you are focusing on the wrong thing. You're not worshiping God. If you worship Him, if you focus on Him, yes, you'll true. be able to see things different. You'll be able to see that, no, He's a great and a mighty God. Yes. You'll be able to see that He is working, he is working in the background in my favor. Amen. You, you'll be able to see that, no, all things are working together for my good. You begin to, you'll be able to see that God is faithful. God just spoke oftenly one to another. And guess what God did? He hikens and he hears it. And guess what he does afterwards? He commands angels to write their names in the book of remembrance. You see, the people that fear God, they are people that sit down and begin to talk about God. And I like to believe that as they sat down to talk about him, they were just telling each other how great and magnificent God was. <laughs> Amen. They just began to share with one another how good God was. And when God hears people talking about him, guess what he does? He commands angels to write their names in the book of remembrance. I wonder a person who spends time talking about God, you can never be miserable, not even a single day in your life. Amen. You can't be miserable talking about God. And as you talk about him, he begins to reveal himself even more to you. The more you talk about Him, the more revelation of God you will receive. I know people sometimes are afraid to talk about God. You know, they're afraid that if I, if I open my mouth to speak, I might end up saying the wrong things, isn't it? Like, you know, they're so scared of God that, oh, if I open my mouth, I might end up saying the wrong things. And they don't want to talk about God because they, they are terrified of God. But that's not what Scripture says. The Bible tells us that they that feared God, guess what they did? They spoke one to another about it. Amen. And when they did, their names were written in the book of remembrance. Don't be afraid. Amen. Don't be afraid to talk about God. Don't be afraid. It's actually, it's the only thing that is able to protect you in this life. Talking about God will protect you from drama. <laughs> Talking about God will preserve you from so many things. If there's anything that is able to guide you in this life, it's talking about God. Amen. I know to some people you become boring when you start talking about God. But it's your own security. Amen. It's actually protecting you. Because these guys are not going to invite you on their funny deals and funny games. Yes. You know, because you have made it clear that I'm no longer of that life. Yes. I'm no longer of that life. If there's anything that these guys will ever do is when there's something crawling in their roof at night that they will call you and they say, please pray for us. <laughs> there's something that is crawling in our roof at night. <laughs> you know? Amen. There's something that is crawling in our roof. So you need to, s you know, there's that word uh, that, is used of, that is used in scripture, which is being set apart, being sanctified. You need to come to that place where you are set apart for the glory of God. Like I'm set apart. You tell yourself that I am set apart. I am set apart. I have been separated. I have been separated. There is a separation that is happening in my life. I am separated for the glory of God. 
Amen. So imagine if you're set apart for the glory of God, it's an automatic entry. <laughs> it's an automatic entry for the will and the plans of God to unfold in your life. Amen. Amen. Without, I mean, without a doubt, if you are sanctified, if you're separated for God, the will of God becomes automatic in your life. You see, now when you're set apart and you're, you're separated, you get to know what is on the mind of God with ease. Amen. You just give to God. Amen. You know, you wake up, you wake up, you wake up and you realize that there is no grace in the cabin. No grace in the cabin. But guess what you do? You just give Him praise. You just, you just get up there and you just begin to worship Him. You just begin to tell him how great and how magnificent a God he is. Yeah. Yeah. So because your praise is not determined whether there is grace or no grace. <laughs> grace or no grace, I will worship you, God. <laughs> I will worship you. I will worship you. You wake up, you wake up and you realize that you need to go to town and you don't even have bus fare to go to town. <laughs> Guess what you do? You just praise him. You just thank him for he is a great and a magnificent God. You just worship Him. You just thank Him. You just thank Him. You know, things are not necessarily the way that you want them to be, but guess what? You just thank Him. Because you tell yourself, I know that He has got something up His sleeves. <laughs> oh, He's going to do something great for me. I don't know what it is, but He is going to do something great for me. Like, oh, I know this God is going to do something great for me. I know that this God is full of surprises. He is about to surprise me today. <laughs> There's about to be a surprise. Mm, this is about to be a surprise. So you just you just get up and you just worship him. You just thank him. You just glorify his name. You declare his faithfulness. You tell yourself that he will never leave me and he will never forsake, forsake me. You tell yourself that I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. Am not forgotten. Mm. Even though it looks as though that everything else is falling apart around falling apart around you. You just stand and you stop looking at what's happening yeah. around you. Yeah. And you just, you just look up to Jesus. Just look up to Jesus. Just focus on Christ. And you say, Lord, have your way in my life. You tell yourself, you say, let it be unto me in accordance to thine will. Because I know that your will is to do something beautiful in my life. You tell yourself that your will is to do something beautiful in my life. Trust me, stressing about things not being okay in your life is not going to make things okay in your life. It's not going to make things okay in your life. Stressing about things is not going to make things okay. You know, this is what, this is what actually the scripture says. You know, that scripture that I read in, uh, in Matthew 6.33, before you get to there, it says, don't worry yourself. Don't stress yourself about any of these things. Don't worry. And 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 when you read when you read in Ephesians when you read in uh, Ephesians it tells us and it says in Philippians rather right, it says be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication make your request known unto God. Be careful for nothing. The will of God is for you to come to Him and tell Him what your situation is. But immediately after telling Him what your situation is, give Him thanks. Yes, yes, yes. You are thanking Him to say, God, I thank you for that which you have already done. Amen. I know you have already done something in my favor. There's, a, there's an interesting prayer in, um, in John chapter 17. See, Jesus Christ prays in John chapter 17. When you read the, first, the fifth verse, you hear Jesus Christ asking God. Remember, remember the thing is, be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication, make your request known unto God. So we have Jesus Christ making his request known unto God. And his request in, in John 17, verse 5, you know, he says to God, Glorify thou me with thine self, with the glory which I had with thee. He is literally asking, asking God to glorify him with the glory that he had with God. But when you read on the 20th verse of the very same chapter, you hear Jesus Christ saying, the glory which thou has given me. When did you get that glory? When did he give you that glory? I just thought 15 verses ago, you were asking for that glory. When did you get it? He simply believes that when he asked for it, guess what God did? God gave them. 
and that should be your mindset. <laughs> that when I asked for it, at that very particular time, guess what God did? He gave it to me. And in the very same prayer now, we have Jesus Christ saying that the, very, the glory that you have given me, I am giving to them. And he was talking about us. Imagine Jesus Christ prayed, and he prayed that the glory that he had with God is the very same kind of glory that he is giving to us. Oh, regardless of whatever situation you might be going through, be reminded there is that glory that Jesus Christ had with God. And the very same glory, guess what Jesus did? He handed it to us. Amen. Oh, Jesus gave us that glory. Amen. Oh, we have that glory in Christ Jesus. So now when you, when you begin to think like that, there should be a smile on your face, isn't it? Amen. Like, oh, the glory that Jesus Christ had. He gave it to me. He gave it. I can't be miserable with the glory of Jesus. That's impossible. Yes. Isn't it? That's impossible. But now in your own personal life, as you're going through stuff and, and you just want to, and, and you in that place of prayer, you make your request known, on, known unto God and immediately afterwards, you begin to thank Him. Yes. Say, God, I thank you. God, I thank you because I know that you hear me when I pray. I know that you hear me when I pray. And I thank you because I know that you are changing things in my favor. You, you say, God, I thank you. I thank you because I know that my situation is changing. My situation is changing. Even if, even if you, you open your eyes an hour later and you realize your situation is still the same, you need to have the confidence on the inside of you that something has changed. It may not have manifested in the natural as yet, but something has changed. Something has changed. So the enemy of your soul, the thief, the devil, he will come and he will begin to whisper in your ears and begin to tell you that you will never make it. You will never amount to anything. Or this prayer will never be answered. He will begin to tell you all kind of lies. But then you have to stand on the promise of God and say, that which God said is what's going to happen in my life. Amen. That is what's going to happen in my life. Hold on to the promises of God. Amen. Amen. Hold on to the promises of God. You see, God's, God's answer for your prayer is yes and amen. Yes. And that's what you should hold on to. Hold on to yes. saying that when I prayed, God's answer was yes and amen. And things are going to work in my favor. All things are working together for my good. All things are working together for my good. See, I think in this particular scenario, you, you have to look like a madman, isn't it? You know, because everything is falling apart around you and you're smiling. Amen. Like, what are you smiling about? Everything is falling apart around us. And I'm sure it'll be a very difficult thing between a husband and wife, isn't it? Let's say the wife has faith and the husband doesn't have faith, or the, or, or, or the husband has faith and the wife doesn't have faith. And, 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 and the wife is looking, at, is looking at the husband and the husband is all jolly and happy. And, you know, the wife is trying to understand there's no grace in this cabin. <laughs> what are you smiling about? <laughs> you know, but I guess people have to be on the very same page. They have to be on the same page. They have to be on the same page. They have to understand one another. And they, they have to be able to see things in the very same light. Yeah. You know, they have to see things in the very same light. To say, no, God is faithful. Yeah, true. God is a faithful God. He will never leave us and He will never forsake us. Amen. We are not forgotten. We are not forgotten. He is right here with us and He is Amen. fighting this battle on our behalf. Amen. Amen. So that's just about it when it comes to praying the will of God. Amen. Amen. The only way you'll ever pray the will of God is when you focus on Jesus. Don't, and you see, when you stand on Jesus. He's the solid rock. He's the solid rock upon which I stand. Amen. Or other ground is sinking sand. Trust me, uh, drugs are sinking sand. Yes. Alcohol is sinking sand. I mean, trust me, trust me, I mean, your auntie or whoever you might trust in is sinking sand. Anything else that you might trust in to bring you solutions is sinking sand. Only Jesus Christ is the rock. Yes. Stand upon Jesus. Amen. Stand upon Jesus. Amen. Regardless of whatever it is that is happening in your life, stand on Jesus. Amen. Amen. So... 
You have to focus on Jesus in order for you to experience success in your life. Remember, in closure, let me just let me just say this story once again. Um, the other guys were walking in when I was talking about it. But it's a very common story that we all know. The story of the children of Israel. You see, it, it is, it was the will of God for them to go into the promised land. But it's not every one of them that went into the promised land. Some died in the wilderness and they died simply because of memoring and complaining. I know it's pretty much an easy thing for us Zimbabweans to remember and complain. It has become rather natural and a part of our existence. It's more like if we don't complain and if we don't remember something has gone wrong. You know, we just have to complain, we just have to remember, we just have to say something, something bad. It's, it's a normal way of life. But guess what? Memoring and complaining will cause you to miss on that which God is doing. Will cause you to miss on that which God is doing. But it's only when you, you get up and you just give Him praise. You just worship him. You know, be like Joshua and Caleb. See things differently. So the Bible tells us that when, when, the, when, when the spies went to spy the, the, the land of the, the promised land, they got there and, and, and the other spies saw giants that were insurmountable, giants that they could not defeat. But Joshua and Caleb saw the milk and the honey. And, and, and saw how God was going to deliver them and how God was going to make them possess the promised land. Amen. Be that particular person who is not seeing the giants. Amen. Amen. Don't be the one seeing the giants. Refuse to see the giants. See the promise. Amen. See the milk and see the honey. Amen. Amen. And see God delivering you. Yeah. Amen. Choose to see that which God is saying. And when you see that which God is saying, then you'll be able to pray the will of God. And you'll be able to have victory in your life. Never went to preschool, dropped out of high school, not because I wanted to. Never went to preschool, dropped out of high school, not because I wanted to. Yeah. I can't believe this, suddenly I'm not with no creation All I ever did is pass the way to spot my transgressions Silver and gold 